But on today's edition, I'm going to try to flex as well as I can for Raquel Rodriguez. How are you doing today? Oh, uh, we're doing super good. I got to put know? the thumb behind the the muscle to see. <laughs> you know. Hey, that's great. That's great. At least you tried. You know, a lot of people don't even try. At least you tried. That's true. And trying is half the battle. But <laughs> thank you so much for being here on Tan and Count. There's so much meat on the bone to talk about you. But first, let's talk about the DCU Center Smackdown, October 7th, the night before Extreme Rules. I am pumped. You're pumped. We're all pumped. But in reality, like, what's it like attending a WWE live event if someone has not experienced this uh, monumental moment? It's exactly that. It's monumental. The energy. The stardom just the unexpectedness of the entire show because you never know who's going to show up you never know what they're going to bring you never know what they're going to do you know we have tables ladders and chairs that we involve into really any kind of fight that we want so <laughs> you guys can expect the unexpected of course and friday night smackdown is full of roman reigns you have Sami Zayn. you have the usos you have Liv morgan you have of course damage control who's working both brands right now but you can see bailey dakota and eo and maybe myself taking on all three again i'll do it challenge accepted <laughs> i was gonna say well challenge accepted uh, you're, you're putting out challenges entering your own i love it so much uh watch out bailey it seems that you have a target <laughs> on your back she sure does <laughs> talk about the unexpected right now there is this thing happening in the wwe the white rabbit nobody knows what this is this qr code keeps popping up random places fans like myself are going nuts we're all sitting here typing away trying to figure out what's going on What's your theory on this? Not Austin theory, but what's your theory on this white rabbit? What's going on? Honestly, I am just as confused and lost as y'all are. I'm doing the same thing with the QR codes. I'm trying to figure out. There's so many um, ideas of who it could be out there, right? Like, mm -hmm. of course, it could be really anything. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I can't even give you my theory because I'm just as confused as you guys are <laughs> yeah I, I hope it's not like you know braun Strowman inside like an alice in a wonderland like outfit i'm, I'm a little nervous that that could help possibly happen but we, we don't know but we don't know there's so much happening though <laughs> i'm excited but royal rumble tickets have also gone on sale and it's gonna take place in texas you're from texas now this is exciting because you know only recently in the past decade we've had women's royal rumble matches so you winning in Texas, is this something we're going to have to see in January? I'm telling you, I'm starting now. We are training our hardest. We are going to leave our absolute heart in San Antonio, Texas. This is so amazing because WWE comes to Houston. They come to Austin. They come to Dallas all the time. But San Antonio has yet to see a huge event like this from WWE in such a long time. And San Antonio is so beautiful and it's full of culture and the city and the people are amazing. I absolutely love it. I go, I used to go all the time as a young girl. I still go very often when I come home to visit my family. I have family there as well. So I'm, I'm just so excited to have the Royal Rumble there. I'm, I'm excited to hopefully be a part of it and to be in it and to possibly win it and kick butt in my home state in front of all my family and friends. It's just going to be an absolute dream come true. And the Royal Rumble, I think, to a lot of fans is like the. I, I love WrestleMania, obviously, in the summer. So I love every event, but Royal Rumble <laughs> really is this different idea because people, friends, get together. They put numbers in a hat. They pull up the numbers. Suddenly, you're like, "Oh, I'm number one through 16," and, and you come out. And you're like, "Oh, you're number 15." Shoes, oh my god! Like Royal Rumble creates this whole different atmosphere uh, for fans versus one on one, two on two, three on three, four on four. Like Royal Rumble is a different animal, don't you think? Oh, yeah, 100%. And it kicks off the road to WrestleMania. So it has to be different. It has to be huge. Yes. And that's exactly what they're going to do in San Antonio, Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas. I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to remind everyone of that right now. Look at me. All right. <laughs> is that something new Texas has been using? Is that something new? I've never heard that phrase before. No. Yeah, what? You've never heard that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. That's like, you I'll know. teach you. I'll teach you the ways. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was like, it's like, hmm, is that something? New? Of course, it's something old. I understand. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about something a little, a little sad and a little happy, too, because you recently won the WWE Women's Tag Team titles, and then you recently lost them. You held them for two weeks. <laughs> and I, you know, I love the emotions of like, yay, you son of a, <laughs> why would you ask that question? But yes, so <laughs> what are your feelings on this? Because you just won the vacated championship belts. They, they were kind of up in the air for a little while. And now they're with damage control. How does that make you feel winning the titles, but then losing the titles? 
it's bittersweet. You know, you get a taste. I, I hate to quote Nacho Libre at this time <laughs> in my life, but you get a taste of a piece of the glory. You see what it tastes like. <laughs> and that's exactly what it was. You know what I mean? Like Aliyah and I had this moment and, and honestly, for the two weeks that it was, it was absolutely amazing. I'm grateful that we won the titles and that we were able to celebrate as a tag team together and come together as two different people who have walked through the same path, but at different times. And, and she's an amazing person as well, like getting to work with her and getting to be her tag team partner and going through all of these things together with her, something that I'm going to cherish for my life. But of course, we do have to focus on damage control because they're doing what they said they were going to do. They're trying to take over. And are they doing it the right way? I mean, it, it does take three on one sometimes for them, you know, to try and defeat me the way Bailey did a couple weeks ago. But it, it does give me something fo- something to look forward to because I get hungry when I have these opportunities. I get so hungry and I just, I want my chance at winning those titles back. And that's exactly what Ali and I deserve. We still have our redemption match, our rematch. So hopefully soon that, that will be happening for us. Um, but I'm really looking forward to just getting back in the ring with all three of those girls and just cleaning the ring with them, you know, <laughs> exactly. Breaking them in half, getting my titles back and then going on my merry way to Texas and winning the Royal Rumble, Rumble. <laughs> and, and then made the it, Rumble. and, and then <laughs> WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. And to quote another big famous Texas quote, I hope damage control realizes you don't mess with Texas, you know? You don't mess with Texas. I wouldn't, personally. Uh, <laughs> just, I, I would not. But right now, so you have the women's tag team titles. You have the Raw and SmackDown Women Championships. But, like, the men have the IC Championship, U.S. Championship. Do you think it's time for the women to get a, I wouldn't call it secondary championship, but another title that women can fight for singles competition, not just tag team? A hundred percent. I think that would be something so great for the women's division, especially because we have so much diversity in the women's division. We have women from all over the world, from all over the country, from different backgrounds, different ethnicities. And I think having an intercontinental championship, having a North American championship for the women would be something, you know, just a, a, a huge leap forward for the women's division in wrestling in general. And I personally, I do feel like that is something that is possible and, and is something that's that could possibly be happening in the near future. So I'm looking forward to that and possibly, you know, making new history. <laughs> you can win that too. You know, win tag exactly. team. You, you just get them all. Just, just pile them on. There's a meme of Triple H holding all the championship belts. We'll just take his head out, flop yours on hey, there. If the arms are big enough to carry all the titles, why not? You know? Uh, that's right. I, unfortunately, customs might be a little angry at you every time you show up. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay they'll get they'll get used to it i'm just yeah. gonna have a pass i'm gonna walk through and be like guys the champ is here come on champ is here. come on <laughs> you'd be like champ 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 is here like ma'am are your arms okay do you need assistance because those are look a little heavy but you know you're raquel you got the muscle yeah here. exactly i'm like do i look like i need assistance yeah. i'm not even sweating excuse me <laughs> yeah, excuse me it's six in the morning leave me alone i haven't had my coffee yet <laughs> I, I imagine that happens at an airport you get it. Uh, I understand the, the, what happens. It doesn't happen to me. It obviously happens to you. Um, maybe someday for me. Who knows? But uh, I know some fans obviously recognize you from NXT. But when you came to SmackDown, your last name changed. You were smiling more. What was the transition period? Was there an idea of, hey, I'm on SmackDown. Let's kind of reinvent myself a little bit. Obviously, you're still the same person. You still have the same power. But was there a difference we wanted to, I don't know, transition you to a larger audience yeah I think so and honestly I I would say that of course I I personally always feel like if you're not changing you're not trying Mm -hmm. um if you're not growing you're not trying really so coming from NXT I still wanted to keep that same Raquel Gonzalez I wanted to keep that same hardcore chingona you know bad woman on the block type of vibe um coming up to Smackdown but of course my path took me another way and that's completely fine. Okay. Mm. I, I wanted to be someone who was flexible. I wanted to show the WWE universe that I can do both. I can be this strong, serious badass. And I can also be this likable person that people can look up to that young women can look up to a role model, if you will. And someone who can be positive and can be smiling, but still whoop ass at the same time. Okay. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's yeah. something that I wanted to portray to both 
I wanted to give people the idea that I can do both of those. And I think I've, I've done a great job so far. Personally, in my, in my opinion, I'm still working on every day, getting better at what, what I do, honing in on my craft and trying to show the WWE universe. Cause I know I'm still fresh and I know I'm still new. I still want to show the people who Raquel Rodriguez is, even though the name changed, the person is still the same name, you know, by any other flower you would call a rose, you know, but whatever he says. <laughs> my God, what, did you read a, did you read a quote book this morning before we talked? Cause you're, I, you got, I swear every question you have a quote and I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for well, it. Most of them are about Texas, but it's because I'm in Texas. So I'm in just in such a good mood. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was going to say, she's like, hold on. The next quote is about uh, success. Okay. We'll go to that one next. Uh... <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. I No, don't be sorry. It's a, I love it so much. Uh, <laughs> but one of your first matches was against Ronda Rousey. And I know that was a fantasy match uh, for a lot of fans because you're a powerhouse dominant in NXT, destroying everybody. You get to SmackDown, you get to fight someone who's just kind of like the same way, dominating, destroying talent. What was that like being in the ring with Ronda Rousey? Was that a fantasy match for you as well? Yeah, it was one of the most um, nerve-wracking days, I would say. I've had in a very, very long time because it was just from the beginning of the day from when I woke up till the end of that night, I was just, you know, on pins and needles just excited just ready to get in there and then the moment that I was in there and I was looking across the ring you know telling Ronda Rousey my name is Raquel Rodriguez I was like holy caca this is <laughs> the baddest woman on the planet and I'm about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her let's go you know it was like one of those um, and then coming out of the match, of course, too, like I could not have been prouder. I could not have been happier with with everything that I gave in that match because she is so smart. She's been doing this for so long. I came from a basketball background. She came from the UFC. You know what I mean? So it's it's a completely different world, completely different mindset. So I was just I was just elated, honestly, with the whole thing. And I could not thank her enough for the opportunity of opening having that open challenge because it really did open a lot of eyes, I think, to who Raquel Rodriguez is and what I'm capable of, but it opened up a lot of doors for me as well. Yeah, I think it did because when someone's introduced to the audience who maybe watch, wasn't watching NXT, sees you in the ring with Ronda, immediately think superstar, immediately think important. This person is important. If she's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ronda Rousey, this, some, this is someone we should watch versus someone who's like showing up and getting their butt kicked by Ronda. It was not that. It was not the case at all. Which yeah. opened the door for you, obviously, as a talent. Though Ronda is taking on Liv Morgan, Extreme Rules, an Extreme Rules match, that SmackDown Women's Championship belt October 8th on Peacock. Who's going to win? Oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? So, okay, at SummerSlam, I said Liv was going to retain because I really believed in the underdog. You know what I mean? And then last this past Friday, I watched her jump off of the post from the ring onto a table onto Lacey Evans. It was the most extreme thing I've ever seen Liv do. I'd never expected it. I was nervous for her jumping off of that. I mean, I'm tall. So, you know, me jumping off of that is just a little extra. Yeah. But <laughs> but her doing that just tells me that I still can believe in her. And I'm going to say Liv Morgan is going to retain an extreme rules because she has this crazy side. She has this extreme side. And I've seen her go to dark places and come back out fighting and clawing. And that's exactly what I think she's going to do. So I'm going to go with Liv Morgan. All right. All right. You sir, here to your folks. So if you're, if you're wrong, Ronda Rousey is coming for you. Just, uh, just. Well. I'm going to have to go watch some tape after this just to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, November, 5th, <laughs> November 5th, though, Crown Jewel, main event, Roman Reigns, Logan Paul. But the question is not about Logan Paul and Roman Reigns. The question is, do you think we're going to see women in Saudi Arabia main event a Crown Jewel pay-per-view in the future? Yes, yes, I do. You know, I was very excited about the last trip they just took to Saudi Arabia because they took so many women with them. And we had so much of our women's roster just representing over there. And it was yeah. so great. So, yeah, I definitely think women are going to main event one of these one of these crown jewels events for sure. <laughs> well, because Becky Lynch and Lita had a banger of a match last time they were there and there were posters all over Saudi Arabia. And I know that was kind of like a brand new thing. Everyone was shocked and, and it was inspiring because you're yes. seeing this movement of, of the WWE is changing things and they're doing yeah. a great job at, at presenting women in a positive manner versus maybe someone in different cultures look at things differently. But yet main eventing crown jewel for you, I think would be a monumental moment because whoever does it first will be remembered forever. 
Exactly, exactly. There's so many great opportunities coming and opening up for women right now that I, I'm just elated about everything that is possible at the moment. But the fact that the women get to also showcase their personalities and their individuality in Saudi Arabia at Crown Jewel is even more important, I think, to me, because it lets the fans over there know these aren't just women, but that is Bianca Belair. That is Rhea Ripley. That right there, that outfit screams Liv Morgan because that is Liv Morgan. And that's what we love to see is that there's individuality within the women. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, Logan Paul and Roman Reigns, though, let's talk about that one for one second, because, you know, this is going to be a huge matchup for entertainment wise, because this is going to bring in so many more eyeballs. If you weren't going to watch Crown Jewel, which you are stupid for not watching it, but uh, I apologize yeah. for the audience, but you're stupid for not watching. Yeah. But, but this match is going to bring in so many more eyeballs from the entertainment business. Logan Paul, is he going to be the one who finally takes down the head of the table? You know, I got to give it to Logan Paul. That guy has some cajones. Um, and he's he's really showed the WWE universe what he's capable of. You know what I mean? And he's he is a champ in his own right, a fighting champ in his own right. However, mm. it's Roman Reigns. It's the head of the table. This man has been running WWE. And as good as Logan Paul is, he is still very green to WWE. He is still very green to what we do here and Roman Reigns is the top guy he's got all of the knowledge he's got all of the experience I'm gonna have to go with Roman Reigns on this one yeah I'm putting my money down on that <laughs> if, if I'm allowed to I don't know if yeah. I am uh, it'll be a, I'll a, take it I'll take it don't yeah, worry it'll be, I'll, uh, hey, I'll hang it through Zoom <laughs> and there you go there you go uh, but <laughs> I'll hold on to that for you <laughs> yeah please that, that that was a hundred so hold on to that for me please oh. a monopoly money though not real money uh though <laughs> Survivor Series is also coming to Boston November 26th. Triple H announced that this is not just going to be Raw vs. SmackDown. Oh, no, no, no. This is going to be a War Games Survivor Series. You know about War Games because the last <sighs> time NXT held one of their War Games events, you were on the winning team. You were on the winning team. And I don't want to brag, but the year before, I was also on the winning team. So I'm kind of like a two-time War Games winner champion undefeated. So if the women are like, you know, whoever the captains are going to be, we don't know. We don't Wait know. Wait a minute. The you're the captain here. of this. We're, you're the captain. Okay. <laughs> I should be. I, I have the most experience. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name um, in the bucket for captain of SmackDown War Games team because I have a lot of experience in this. I feel like I bring a lot of different to the table and I'm just excited because War Games is actually my favorite, favorite, favorite event. It is my favorite match. It is extreme. Just having the cage, having the two rings, it's it's absolutely insane. The possibilities, the things that the women pull out. I mean, I remember EO putting that trash can over her head <sighs> yes. and then just jumping onto us, blindly jumping onto us. Ah, she's insane. It was it was an absolute just insane match. And I'm excited for this because it's going to be raw SmackDown and have a little bit of NXT in, in, in it too, isn't Am I right? NXT is going to be a little bit a part of it. Are they the day before? The day, the day before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's going to be great seeing them too out there. And this is an opportunity for NXT to get out of Florida too and, and be extreme and really see what it's like to have the big WWE audience, especially in Boston. <laughs> so, I know, crazy fans. <laughs> who, would be, who would be on your team though? So right now, if you are the captain, which you will be the captain, um, who um, on Raw or SmackDown would be on your team? So obviously you got three more teammates. Who would they be? So I can choose from Raw and SmackDown? I'll allow it. The rules. Oh, you'll allow it? I'll allow Listen. it. Because I'm the rule maker somehow. <laughs> I would love to have my girl Rhea Ripley on my team this year. Because the, the first year I was in War Games, she was on the opposite team. You know, mm. we, we had our differences mm -hmm. or whatever. But I would love to have Rhea Ripley be on my team this year. And I would love to have Bianca Belair be on my team as well. And I know that's a pretty stacked powerhouse team. So I think for my fourth member, we need someone who's just a little bit out of the box. A little different. I would pick Liv Morgan from SmackDown because she's she's shown this extreme side to her, and I think that's what we need. Also, us it. as powerhouses, can you imagine just, just tossing her as a weapon, throwing her at other people, maybe from one end of the ring to the other? Long darts, happen. just throwing Long Liv darted, Morgan yeah. across the room. I like it. Throwing them through people <laughs> through cages. I, again, this is so exciting. There's so much. There's so much happening. SmackDown, October 7th at the DCU Center. You got Royal Rumble tickets on sale. You got Crown Jewel coming up on Peacock. You got Survivor Series on Peacock. There's just so much happening in the WWE. I'm so excited. Um, <sighs> one thing before I let you go, I did speak to Ricardo Rodriguez, a uh, the personal ring announcer one time in the WWE, and I asked him 
you know, there's a joke going around. Someone immediately asked him, hey, she, her name, her last name changed. Are you guys related? And I'm like, this is so stupid. Why would them, what every John Smith is related to each other? So he, <laughs> he, he told me that he would return to be your personal ring announcer. So let, let's let that, let's get that going. Let's go, Primo. Come on over. I'm ready. <laughs> I love it so much. You can come down the custom-made cars. We'll do it all. That sounds great to me. But Raquel Rodriguez, thank you so much for being here on MBZ's Town Count. I had a blast talking to you. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, this was an easy, breezy, fun day for me, and I hope that you win the Royal Rumble. I hope you thank team you. Captain Survivor Series. I hope you dominate damage control and get your damn titles back. So we'll have to see. But again, thank you so much for being here. I've been Seafall. She's been Raquel Rodriguez. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.